Hi, you're watching Professor Plays. This is my factorial tutorial series built from scratch. Today I'm going to talk about Culverex. I'm in a map that has the creative mod running so I can build things instantly. And I have two Culverex, uh, Culverex builds set up here and running. And you can see that this one on the right is producing more 235 than the one on the left. You can see approximately how much more. It just filled up. It just reached that point on the belt. And this one over here is at this point on the belt. This is the kind of, quote, traditional Covarex build. You can find a bunch of blueprints online. They may look a little different than this, but it's essentially what they are, how they're set up. You use a centrifuge. You put the Covarex uh, recipe in there. It wants, as inputs, uh, both types of uranium. It wants 235, the bright one, and 238, the dark one. And notice I have productivity threes in there. That gives you free production whenever this bar reaches the, reaches the right edge there. It converts, the, the Covarex process converts some of the dark uranium into the bright uranium. So that's what this is doing. The, the uranium, in this case the 238, the dark uranium is going down this belt and this inserter picks up a dark uranium 238 as needed to replenish what is converted inside here. And this inserter, uh, filter inserter, stack filter inserter, removes the 235, the dark or the bright uranium from the centrifuge, puts it onto this belt, and this inserter picks up uranium and puts it back into the centrifuge. You might think, if you've never done this before, you might think, whoa, that's kind of odd. Why are you doing that? So let me demonstrate. Give me a centrifuge. Let's go over here. And let's just put some. Give me this recipe. I'm going to need to speed this up, aren't I? Uh, let's make this faster. Let's put you there. Give me a beacon. Again. A little bit too high with that beacon. I got you right on the corner. There we go. There we go. That's good enough. And some power. There's some power. Okay, so it's set to use Cobra X. We have a lot of beacons around it uh, to make it run fast. So it wants as inputs uh, 235 and 238. It says that ingredients are 40, 235, the bright one, and 5, 238. And products, what you get out is 41, 235, and 2, 238. So it's going to consume three of the dark uranium, the 238. It's going to give you an extra bright uranium, the 235. All right. Now, so what's the big deal? Why is it kind of tricky uh, to set this up? You have to remove the products, the, the, the inputs, and put them back in. So let me demonstrate. So here's the machine. I'm just going to put in some material. It's running. I took out the extra. So it's still running, what you would expect. It's finished. Now let's look inside. There's what's inside. 41 of the bright uranium and two of the dark uranium. So it gave us an extra one and it consumed three of these. Now here's the issue. I could put a bunch of these in there, the, the dark uranium, the 238. It does not restart. So the way to think of it is there is an input and an output. On the left you have the input ingredients, on the right you have the output ingredients. In order to get the machine to restart, you have to remove the output ingredients and then put what it wants back in as input on the input side. So that's, you know, you could do that in various ways. You see a lot of blueprints where there's a conveyor that runs around in a loop and basically takes the stuff out and puts it right back in. That, that's, that's a solution. So I have over here a setup that, like that, which, is, which does essentially that. You'll find lots, lots of blueprints like this online. So here's the machine. It has 
a stack filter inserter, which is set to filter out the bright uranium, the 235, and that's removing, notice the direction of the arrow, that's removing from the centrifuge. And then it has a normal stack inserter, which is inserting back into the centrifuge. So it's, it's recycling, essentially. It's taking out the bright uranium and putting it back in. It only will uh, put enough material, I shouldn't say, it'll only put as much as it can into the machine. It can't overfill it. The machine wants approximately enough material to run two cycles. So once it's satisfied that, once it's put enough uh, 235 in there, the extra 235 will go past this inserter, it will not get picked up, and it will go down here. So the extra 235 is going to make its way down this conveyor. Over here on this side we have the 238, the dark uranium, and this inserter, the fast inserter, is replenishing the 238 that gets consumed. So each cycle, three of those 238s are consumed, and it's going to replenish those. Now remember, it, it wants enough material to run approximately two cycles. So instead of 40 uh, 235, it currently has 81, you know, approximately twice, what, twice the minimum. And the, the dark uranium, it wants five, and it's got 11, so approximately twice as much. So this is replenishing the 238 dark uranium that gets consumed. This one is is outputting the or removing the 238 after the cycle completes, and then it just, it just gets replenished with this one. So the the old or the output 238 is removed by this inserter, and then new 238 is put back in. It doesn't. On this side, it's pretty obvious that it's looping, that it's recycling the material. Take the material out, put the material back in until it can't hold anymore, and then the extra goes on by. This side over here is just set up a little differently because there's so much 238. You don't need to worry about recycling 238. There's a bunch of it. You could do the same thing. I could move these around, but it doesn't make any difference. 238 you have lots of. It's the 235, the bright one, that you're trying to get more of. Notice this machine is using productivity modules. That production bar, when it reaches the end there, you get free productions. You get a free output. Whatever was whatever the output is, you get a free one. That's the like I say. This is the typical Coverex processing setup that you find blueprints online. Some variation of this. On this side. I have the Coverex processing setup that I designed, and you'll see other designs like this uh, online. This is using some of the logic, it's using an arithmetic combinator. It's counting the number of 235s, the bright ones, that are inserted into the centrifuge. As soon as the required number, which is 40, are inserted into the centrifuge, this counter, there's a wire right there, that's connected to this inserter, this filter inserter. When this reaches 40, this filter inserter is disabled. So it will it will prime itself with the required number 40, 235, and then it will stop. It will not insert more 235 into the machine. It well, it's running right now, but okay, now it's running. There's no extra in there. So when it's running, there's no extra 235 in there. On this side, there's two chests with two stack inserters. And at the end of each cycle, it removes the output and puts it back in as input. That's what these inserters over on this side are doing. You, see them, you can see them running now. It's removing the, the output and putting it back in as input. And on this side over here, it outputs the extra 235. There it is. It picks up. Well, this is for priming originally. This is for picking up 235 when it's first starting. This one here is. And then this one picks up the required 238s to replenish those that were consumed. And this is the counter logic or counter circuit right here, the arithmetic combinator, which is counting the number of 235 that are inserted into the machine. Now, the reason I did this, the reason I came up with this design, normally in factorial machines want to collect enough material to run approximately two cycles. So this centrifuge wants to collect enough 235 to run approximately two cycles. That means it wants to collect 80 of those. That takes a long time to collect that. And so I just said, well, I can just use a counter 
and as soon as I have the required number in there, I'll turn off that inserter, and I'll let the, the 235 go down the conveyor and, and prime the next machine. I had, I had the belt down there so we could see that running. So that's the difference. This, uh, this is my design, which tries to be more efficient. It's better. It's better in the early part of the Cobra X uh, because it gets the centrifuges primed earlier. It gets all of them running earlier because it's frugal again. You know, my design, my frugal design, I was talking about in, a, in an earlier episode. This is a frugal design. It does not use any more 235 than is necessary to get the machine running. So therefore it gets all the machines running sooner uh, to produce the 235. And then once they're all running, the extra 235 isn't just going out onto the belt. This setup over here takes a little longer to get started because it's it it hoards. I don't know. It, it's collecting enough material for approximately two uh, cycles, so it takes longer to get them all running. However, this is the kind of the traditional one again. Once this is running, once they're all running, you know, both of them. Once they're all running, this is this this has more production. This setup over here will produce more uh, 235 than my design does. That, so that's the basic difference uh, between the two. Now you could you could put more of these, you could build more of these if you wanted more production. It doesn't make any difference. At that point, if you have enough production that you could do one or the other, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, I'll show, yeah, well, maybe it does make a difference because you might want to use this design because this is the traditional one. In the traditional design, you can use productivity modules, which I have in there, and that gives you free stuff. That essentially gives you free... Uh, 235. My design, you cannot do that. Uh, if you put productivity modules in the centrifuge over here, it confuses, or it doesn't confuse, it doesn't use the, it does use the, it bypasses the counter, I guess. The counter can't count the free ones that you get. Does that make sense? If I put productivity modules over here, when you get the free uh, product from those modules, they would not be counted. And so the, the whole the whole reason this is efficient is because it's able to count the uh, 235 that's inserted into the centrifuge. If you put those productivity modules in there, the free product that you get, they appear inside the, the centrifuge, and so therefore they would not be counted. So at that point it would be just... Well, it would not be as good as this one because... Um, Maybe it would. No, it's a little bit slower. I think it's just because of the way the inserters are are stacked or arranged. This might be a... Well, that kind of defeats the purpose. It would defeat the purpose if you if you did that. But the whole purpose of this is to be is to be frugal or efficient. Anyway, so if you want high throughput, if you want to make if you want to make a lot of uh, 235, find a blueprint online or you know just just look at this on just pause your screen and. and make a duplicate of this. There's nothing fancy about it. You can see everything right there. Everything that there is. Uh, this one, if you want to use the one that's more efficient, get my blueprint from professorplace.com and I have all the wiring and the and the logic in there. And so it should run. should work. So that's that's Cobra X. Two different builds of Cobra X. And pay no attention to this. Now this is my design that is on the website professorplace.com and this is a complete uh, raw uranium goes in here it's processed in centrifuges it output you that's the uranium ore raw uranium ore goes in there it goes through the centrifuges it outputs the uranium and you're going to get uh, 235 going up this way 238 going down this way and then it's going over here and these machines are set up to run Coverx. And so right now, I, I just started this, well, not too long ago before I started recording. So none of these machines are running right now. Uh, let's see how close we are. How close are we? Yeah, so if you hover over this, this arithmetic combinator right 
there where I'm pointing, right where my character is, and look on the right, it says 26. So it's only been, only been running long enough to get 26 of the 235. If I click on it, there's 26 in there. So it's counting how many are in there. Once it gets the required number 40, it will disable that inserter. It will disable that inserter right there. And then the new 235 will go down the conveyor and start priming the next machine. It also has logic, uh, this does, uh, right here, that diverts any new 235 to the next row up here. So if I put some more 235 in here, I right, put some 235 in there, and we'll watch it come over here and prime this. So this number on the right is going to go up as it counts those, or as they get added. There's 30, 31. So when it gets to 40, so there's 40, this this changed. So now this inserter was enabled, and now it's putting the, the 235 up here on this conveyor. So it, it, it primes this row, the bottom row, and then when that row is primed, see this one's running, this machine's running. So now every time, every cycle, every process this machine runs, it's going to output a 235 onto that conveyor. There it goes. And that's going to go down and prime the next machine. So once the first one's primed and running, it's going to prime the others. And now the new 235 that comes in, this logic is diverting it up here, and it's now priming the second row. So this one's now being primed, and you can see it has 27, 28. Again, that's going to take a long time. You know, we're, we're, we're getting 235 very quickly. That's not the way it works in the game. You, these are very rare, so it takes a long time to get those. But once that first one's running down here, you know this row is going to get primed and start running. Now, once all four of these are running, then you're st you're going to get 235 down here, and then you can whatever you want. You make the fuel for your reactor, you make atomic bombs, whatever you need. You can make the nuclear fuel, whatever you want. So that's my design. That that is on the website. This uh, I think it's exactly like this. That's on the website. Now that one's running. That one got primed. Now they're going up here to prime this one. So that's my design. Uh, that's everything. That's that's uranium processing and Cobrex and fuel production um, and even atomic bombs and nuclear fuel. Are you not? Why are you not running? Oh, you're, you're waiting on. Uh, you're waiting on two thirty. Oh, they're not all running yet. Right, right, right. They, they all have to get primed. All these have to get primed. And then the extras, then you get lots and lots of 235 uh, down here. Then you start making fuel. Then you start making atomic bombs. Now, this is using logistic chests. So in order to make atomic bombs, you have to put the material in your network that atomic bombs want. So they want uh, explosives. They want rocket control units. Uh, and then that, the 235 they get from here. So these requester chests are requesting... This one's requesting rocket control units. This one's requesting requesting explosives, and then the atomic bombs go out there into that chest. Same thing over here on this side. So that's my design, which is on the website. And these, um, this kind of design here, there's a. I did not put this on my website. I just built this. Uh, there's lots and lots of these online. This is the kind of like I say the traditional. Well, you know, pause the screen, you know, or pause the video, and you could build that. There's nothing, nothing special about that. And then this is just my design built to compare it to the, to the standard design. But the, the one on the left here, is is this, is this right here. Okay, so that's Coverex for Factorio. And they, once you get to this point, you know, there's there's scads of well, once they're all running, lots and lots and lots of, of uranium. Which, it does take a lot to make atomic bombs. What does it take? 30. 30, 235 to make an atomic bomb. So, you know, that's that's going to take a lot. But this will generate a lot. This this is consuming a blue belt of uranium ore. I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's a blue belt here of uranium ore. And it, it never reaches, well, it, it reaches the end, but it never backs up. It's consuming a blue belt of uranium ore. 
with this setup. So that is Cobrax. Hi, it's Professor from the future. You know me, I can't leave anything alone. I'm just doing a little bit more tweaking on these blueprints. So these are the prints that are up there as of this moment on the website. These versions are uh, uranium processing 23.1.20. Yeah, both 23.1.20. So this one is the, the first one, if you will, when you want to start getting uh, uh, nuclear fuel. Obviously, you will not have uh, module threes. They're in the centrifuges there, but you won't have those. That's fine. You wouldn't. You wouldn't even need the entire. Uh, you would need both rows. You just one row would be sufficient when you're when you're getting started. So that's the, that's the one that starts. It makes nuclear fuel. It recycles spent fuel cells. There's nuclear fuel there. So that's the first one, and then this and then this one which will go on top of the first one. You just plop that blueprint down. This is called uh, uranium processing, this one here. And it makes everything. It has Cobrex over here. It makes an atomic bomb over there. So that's, and that's the second one, second design, second blueprint. And it has beacons in there to speed things up. Now, if you get all the beacons, you know, once you get the research completed, you can make speed module threes and productivity threes. It will consume a blue belt. That's a blue belt right there. It will consume a blue belt. Well, almost. Are you? No, it is consuming it. It's consuming a blue belt of uranium ore on on that side as a, as input to the to the process there. And it's making atomic bombs over here. And it's making nuclear fuel, nuclear fuel cells. So that's that's the the full version with Cobrex on that side. So those are up there on the website right now, professorplays.com. Hi, it's Professor from the Future again. You see this the uh, belt right here that's got this yellow box on it? There's a wire going to the belt there. You can see that green wire, and it's connected over to this inserter. When I click on this inserter on the left, it says enable condition is the 235 uranium is less than 4. That's actually reading the uranium on the belt. What that's in there for is if everything backs up and the uranium 235 backs up all the way to this point, it shuts off the inserter that is inserting 238. Basically, it turns off the process, stops feeding in the material uh, into the centrifuge to stop it so it doesn't keep trying to run. Because it'll, what happens then is it gets overfilled with material as it backs up on the belt. So that's what that's doing. It's just controlling, if everything backs up completely, the 235, the bright one, turns off this inserter here. There's one on each belt, one there and one there. So forgot to mention that. So hopefully no more messages from the future me.